PC gaming can be an expensive pursuit and building your own rig even more so. Often there is not a large price difference between one component and a setup but applying that logic across an entire build can really add up. Not everybody can afford a high-end gaming PC, that's partially because PC parts generally aren't cheap. But it can also be the result of differing ideas on what high-end actually means. And that's exactly why today I'm going to show you a high-end PC build guide which is aimed at a price of $2000 or 1.3 lakhs Indian rupees. And this is the second part in two-part series of PC build. In the first part, I have built a $1500 high-end gaming slash editing PC. If you haven't watched that video, then I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, so do check out. Now before we get started, I would like to mention that all the parts and components that I'm going to show you in this build is purchased from offline market because the PC components on online market is quite expensive as compared to offline and I'll be showing the price difference in the later part of the video. So now with that being said, let's start. Now let's check out the components and part that I'll be using for this $2000 PC build. For the cabinet, I'm using the Infernova Z Gaming Cabinet from Gaming Circle. For power supply, I chose the Corsair RM650X which is gold certified. For graphics, I went for 6GB MSI GeForce GTX 1060 Gaming X. In terms of motherboard, I decided to go with Aorus AX370 Gaming K5 motherboard. As for the processor, I again chose the Ryzen 7 1700X coupled with 32GB of RAM from G-Skill Rip Jaw. Now for cooling, I selected the Master Liquid Lite 120 from Cooler Master. And at last for storage, I went with Samsung 960 Evo 250GB M.2 SSD as my primary storage and 2TB Western Digital hard drive for storing the data. So let's start with the processor. For this high-end gaming PC build, we are using the Ryzen 7 1700X which is AMD's flagship CPU in the new Ryzen lineup. Now some of you may think that why I didn't use the 1800X for this build. And the reason behind this is that Ryzen 1800X is almost $100 expensive than 1700X with just 5-7% to better performance which is not a huge difference and that's why I chose to save my $100 with Ryzen 1700X. Being an X-series CPU, the Ryzen 1700X is meant to be speed bent and has a higher extended frequency range boost. It has a base frequency of 3.4GHz and a precision boost frequency of 3.8GHz. The Ryzen 1700X is an 8-core processor with 16 thread and if you are into gaming or editing then I guess you know what that mean. It cost me 27,500 Indian rupees in offline market but in Amazon India it's available for about 30,500 Indian rupees so I saved 3000 in the processor. After careful consideration, I decided to go with Aorus AX370 Gaming K5 motherboard. This motherboord is full ATX affair with 4 DDR4 DIMM slots, 3 metal reinforced PCIe slots, 4 USB 3.1 ports and support of AMD's latest Ryzen CPUs. The board supports all AMD AM4 CPUs including 7th generation APUs and the entire Ryzen lineup. The gaming K5 is compatible with two card SLI and Crossfire setups. The single M.2 slot is ready to accept PCIe and VMA storage devices to go along with up to 8 onboard SATA drives. When the zoned RGB lighting is disabled, the gaming K5 has a subdued black and grey look. Once the switch is thrown, the dim slots, PCIe slots and other areas on the board lights up in an 1.5 million colors, controlled by Gigabit's RGB Fusion software. Aorus is positioned to readily target the high-end gaming segment with premium features and aesthetics. It also supports two-way SLI and Crossfire X config split between its main PCI Express X16 slots. Now, I purchased this motherboard for 13,500 Indian rupees in offline market but in Amazon it is priced at 17,000. For the GPU, I use the 6GB MSI GeForce GTX 1060 Gaming X which is not the greatest GPU in the market right now but I wanted to build this gaming PC under $2000 so I chose this one and a huge shout out to Nvidia for sending me this. Now don't get me wrong, if you combine the specs you can already tell that 1060 is a terrific card in 1080p domain. And even at monitor resolution of 2560 by 1440 this card should hold up really well. It's designed to be the ultimate 1080p GPU for those who want to run games at the highest possible settings. It's also the least expensive VR capable GPU in Nvidia's arsenal. The graphics card has been fitted with the powerful dual slot twin frozen revision 6 dual fan cooler. The temperature of this card will sit at 65 degree under full load and just remain incredibly silent. The offline pricing of this graphics card is 27,500 but in Amazon it is priced at whopping 35,000 Indian rupees which is a huge difference. 
As for the RAM, I use the dual 16 GB stick of G Skill Rib Jaw. The two kits from G Skill are among the most expensive on test and they are undoubtedly the most striking when it comes to design. The cheaper Rib Jaw kit is far more extravagant than other 2400 MHz kit. The sticks are covered with red angled metal that stands markably proud of the dim dual inline memory module. The 32 GB memory that I used in this build is quite sufficient for video editing, high end gaming, or any other major workstation task. This 2 stick of 16 GB RAM cost me 21,000 Indian rupees in total, but in Amazon it is priced at 22,520. As for the storage, I use the Samsung 960 EVO 250GB M.2 SSD as my primary storage and a 2TB Western Digital hard drive for storing the data. The Samsung 960 EVO is a PCIe 3.0 X4 NVMe SSD that comes in a single-sided M.2 2280 form factor with a max read of 3200 Mbps and max write of 1500 Mbps that has a scary fast data speed which is quite good for gaming and editing. The Samsung 960 EVO M.2 SSD cost me 13,500 Indian rupees and 2 TB WD Blue hard drive cost me 4,500 Indian rupees in offline market. Whereas on Amazon, Samsung 960 EVO and 2 TB WD Blue hard drive is priced at 15,200 and 5,750 Indian rupees respectively. PC hardware does not demand anywhere near as much electricity as it used to, but still I am a firm believer in buying an efficient power supply from a respected brand. The Corsair RM650X fits the bill nicely. It's 80 plus gold certified and you don't need more than 650 watt in modern system with a GPU and a single graphics card. The RM650X is perfect for a strong gaming system because it can support two high-end VGAs with a power consumption of around 200 watt each and that's the reason why I opted for this. The Corsair RM650X power supply cost me 7500 Indian rupees in offline market, whereas in Amazon it is priced at 12400. Closed loop CPU coolers have become remarkably inexpensive, while still maintaining low noise high performance design and the Master Liquid Light 120 is a perfect example. The Master Liquid Light 120 is quite similar to the Master Liquid 120. Both closed loop cooler features 120mm radiator and boost universal compatibility with modern Intel and AMD sockets. The Master Liquid Light 120 only comes with one fan, but it's a good one. It boosts a wide PWM range of 650 to 200 RPM and the fan is relatively quiet at maximum fan speed and near silent at 650 RPM. Cooler Master also uses a low noise pump that's rated for only 8. In short, it's likely a GPU or other system fans that are going to be louder than the Master Liquid Light 120. In offline market, Master Liquid Light 120 cooler cost me 5500 Indian rupees, but in Amazon it is available for about 6900 rupees. As for the cabinet, we chose Infernova Z Gaming Cabinet from Gaming Circle, which has a tiny chassis. It features a dual sided transparent side panel, which looks really cool. At the front, you get the Gaming Circle logo, and in the middle, there is an inbuilt RGB strap, and it also comes with five pre installed RGB cooling fans, which can be controlled manually through a button which is located at the top of the cabinet. And there are about six to seven RGB presets, which you can choose according to your mood. The cabinet cost me about 8000 Indian rupees, whereas it is currently available at the official website for 11000 Indian rupees. So, all in all, if you compare the online and offline pricing, then you can clearly see that there is a huge difference and you can save a lot if you purchase PC component offline. Now let's talk about its performance and how it performs in real life. I built this PC one week ago and since then I am testing it. For a workstation PC, it can easily handle rendering, streaming and other multi-threaded tasks. And I think Ryzen is the best choice not only for performance but also for your wallet. As I am a YouTube content creator, I mostly use this PC for rendering videos and animations and I am really satisfied with the performance. In maximum setting, it can easily render a 5 minute 1080p video with alert applied in just 6 minutes which is really great. However, as for the gaming performance, I loaded up the Assassin's Creed Syndicate for a quick look at the rig's performance. I tested this game all at 2560x1440 resolution and high graphics presets. The game performed very well and it was easily hitting 35 to 40 FPS with max setting. Now I didn't get much time to try some other demanding games, but maybe in coming weeks I will do a full gaming review of this build. Now, if you guys are looking for benchmark scores, then in Geekbench, it has a single core score of 4481, a multi-core score of 23076 and an open seal score of 128747. All in all, these are the specs that I would recommend if you are going for a high quality Ryzen 7 PC build and this is an ideal build for those of you who want a high quality workstation and a solid gaming machine. 
Ryzen is lot cheaper in comparison with the similar GPUs that were made with the intention for boosting performance for content creator and it is still a viable option with gaming in mind. So guys what do you think about this $2000 PC build? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And for more future videos like this, do subscribe to Extreme Droid and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. So this is Samir signing off and I'll see you guys in my next one.